Don't you think there's an opportunity to really co-create and to get the community heavily involved these days with the both the message creation and how it lands and sticks? Yeah, exactly. And I think like, you know, I think so many leaders today still think that they have to dictate the agendas and they know what what uh, what the, sort of the employees are looking for or wanting to hear, but that's not necessarily true. And Lynette, good to see you again. It's so exciting to, uh, you know, reconnect around CultureCast. We have uh, a lot of encouragement from our listeners, but we've also uh, tried to listen hard to them about rethinking it through. But you're in Toronto, and I'm in uh, in the beautiful uh, Seattle area. We're here to uh, join in the celebration of uh, our daughter having her second child. It'll be our third wow. granddaughter, so... Her name is Evie or Evangeline, and uh, we know all about her. I've been talking to her for a better part of nine months, so we're just waiting for her to come out and join the party. There you go. Party time. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. Well, congratulations on that. Thank so, you. yeah, so Lauren, so here we are. We've uh, took a little hiatus to sort of reevaluate kind of our, our previous podcast, uh, the Culture Cast. We decided, based on a lot of our user feedback, to get much more sort of focused and honed in on our, our messaging, make them shorter so that they are easily listened to on a commute or uh, yeah. even just a 10 minute coffee break. So we decided to take a design thinking approach, uh, particularly because that's what we're seeing in the, the marketplace today. It's a lot of problems are being solved through a design thinking uh, type of approach. So here's the format for our listeners. We are going to state a how might we challenge then Lauren and I will we'll talk a little bit about how that, how might we challenge in terms of the uh, end user uh, and how they're affected. And then Lauren and I will talk a little bit about wouldn't it be cool if, and that's sort of a solution. Um, some of the benefits that it's going to bring the end users and we'll sort of wrap up the session uh, with some key takeaways from our talk. And we're going to try to stay uh, under 10 minutes. So uh, I think it'll be really good. It'll be a lot of fun. So Let's get started. Our first How Might We Challenge. Um, the other day, I was at a town hall uh, for this company that I'm, I'm working I'm doing some consulting for. And one of the things I realized uh, while I was listening to this town hall was it was just such a push of information and there was no real engagement uh, from the audience. And to me, I felt like that was a bit of a missed opportunity. So I wondered, you know, how might we help our listeners uh, take those town halls and improve on them, um, getting sort of better communication, going more two-way communication, and really sort of gathering the information that the organization needs to improve itself. So, uh, yeah. yeah, so the how might we on that, and then sort of the, it, the end users and the impact, and I think, you know, for me, the end user uh, impact there is that everybody's impacted. When people are at a town hall, they may not feel comfortable uh, you know, sort of participating in that open environment, so they need time to process information. But also, there's people who do want to speak up and have a voice uh, in those town halls. So, um, I think it's a real opportunity to sort of reinvent how those are, are being done. So, yeah, and I agree with you, Lynette. You know, town halls have been around forever. You know, since uh, people around sitting around caves kind of gathered everybody around. So it's not new technology. However. Uh, the emerging technology and what we can do with community really has evolved. And yeah. I think we really need to challenge our listeners out there, whether they're participants in these town halls or they're the creators of them, to reinvent them. And I think part of that is, is first of all, kind of have an expectation that people are going to be consistent. And first of all, you think you have to be consistent in doing them. You have to commit. Mm -hmm. uh, leaders have to commit and the participants have to commit. To, to actually participating and that, uh, and even though um, leaders do have messages that they want to get out, and, and I think that that's reasonable. I mean, like you said, Lynette, you know, you have leaders do expect to be able to, that's, and, and listen, don't you think there's an opportunity to really co-create and to get the community heavily involved these days with the, both the message creation and how it lands and sticks uh, within, the, within the, uh, the organization group? Yeah, exactly. And I think like, you know, I think so many leaders today still think that they have to dictate the agendas and they know what what uh, what the, sort of the employees are looking for or wanting to hear. But that's not necessarily true. And 
I think that there are many new technologies out there that are easily uh, adopted within an organization to get that real-time engagement uh, from their, their employees. I, I, I've seen it um, in other sort of presentation style uh, formats where you know the, they, there's an app and you can start to ask questions right on the app and the, the peers, your peer group are starting to vote up the, the important questions, right? So that's simple technology that can easily be applied. So I think you're right, the town halls are an opportunity. Uh, they're dated and the, the, the way that they've been done always has, is a bit dated. And I think that there's an opportunity to reinvent them for sure. So, yeah. um, and I think also too, like even just kind of asking for questions even before you go into that town hall. So provide a platform for that too. So for me, wouldn't it be cool if, you know, there was a platform that uh, team members or employees could post their questions beforehand, and then leadership can adapt their presentations to that that type of feedback that that uh, the employees are looking. And then real time during the town hall, um, a lot of it can be done sort of anonymously too for those people who want to ask questions but maybe don't want to have their name shining bright on the the screen. So. Um, yeah, this would be the two things that I would say for sure. You know, and you know, sometimes on that, I think organizations make excuses around. Well, we're too dis no, we're too uh, uh, dispersed. We're not on the same time zones. We have too many people. We have too few people. We have whatever the excuse is. But you and I were both and had a chance to observe. Uh, Google have their they, every Thursday. They used to do it on Fridays because they're so global. Thursday at eleven o'clock, I think, or one o'clock is the time that they do it. So you know, Southeast Asia can participate, everybody can participate. And they have 110, 120,000 people. And literally, they do them every, every consistently, every Thursday. And we're just, I was thinking about, you know, with all the Google people that walked out um, on the, essentially what was the Me Too issue to some extent, just think if they wouldn't have had that consistent town hall. Mm -hmm. Now it sounds like a reactive emergency meeting, but when you've got a regular town hall and you're talking about real tough issues, and they do, I mean, people take them on, you heard them. I mean, there's no, they don't pull any punches and they do a lot of polling and that kind of stuff. And I, you know, my view is that they're not perfect for sure, but if they can do it, I think it's a challenge to every single organization to think about the importance of consistent um, and highly uh, co-created community town halls that really engage the group. And, you know, I think for me too, what you said there is very important. I think there's these quarterly town halls, you know, what's being presented during that, that information it, or during that session is, you know, I don't know. I feel like maybe, you know, is a quarterly town hall even relevant anymore? Like do people even, you know, do they really care or do they, I think, you know, are they looking more for so that regular interaction? So you and yeah. I have been in that situation before where we have started to have regular, consistent, weekly, twice a week, actually, conversations with employees and team, like team members, what we refer to them as, you know, and I think that's really, that really helped and enabled the ability to really understand what was going on in the, in, in the organization and achieve that transparency that people are asking you for um, as a leader, right? They want to know what really is going on and they want their voices to be heard. And they want their, their answer and they want answers to some of their questions and waiting three months, every three months to do that. Um, it, it, I think it's a bit frustrating. I think it's frustrating and I think it's reactive. I mean, I can see that I think it often they evolve because they centered around some form of financial results that obviously happen in a quarter. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's still merit every quarter. You want to uh, be transparent probably and share those results and talk about it. The conversation needs to be happening, in my view, all the time. When you first told me, because you gave me a lot of strong advice, and I resisted it at first because I was kind of fearful, actually, as a leader, that anybody would show up. But, you know, we started, and, and you know, and because we were consistent and we regularly engaged the community and we used the technology, we would have between five, eight, five to 800 people out of a 5,000 organization show up every Friday and, and uh, Tuesday to really participate, uh, Friday or Monday, uh, to participate in these things. And it was the consistency and the openness and the transparency and the authenticity, I think, but not of just me or, or who was on, on the video, it was the community. Mm -hmm. And I think the trust came and I, and I became to appreciate it wasn't about me at all, it was about the community, the largeness of the, and the sense of co-creation as a community, because 
using current technologies, you know, Lynette, that the, the community is very active, chatting away and answering questions and reacting to comments and people are there as much for that as they are for who's ever, who's ever sharing the content of a town. Exactly. I, I remember so many stories being told to me about people who would join those weekly conversations with us and, you know, how in some cases they made them a bet, those conversations made that person a better leader. Um, they felt that they didn't have to wait to get the information sort of trickled down to them. They, they could get that information on a weekly basis. And it was really a powerful thing for them because now they could hear it almost firsthand from you, who, you know, a senior leader within the organization, um, exactly where the, the organization was headed. And they could learn to take that information and translate it into their own particular business units and then continue to um, advance their strategies based on you know what they just heard where the organization is going to go and and in this sort of agility world uh, things are changing every day and every hour every minute so waiting three or four months to find out what's going to happen in in the organization and what's next it, it's too late it's it's too long it's too long so one of the other things that I think we're saying here is you know maybe start to look at having a town hall on a much more regular basis um, if you don't think you can manage a week uh, on a weekly uh, basis, go at least monthly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and, and then, you, want, you say you're going to do it at 11 o'clock on Friday, because I remember you saying to me one thing, listen, Rubus, if you're going to do this thing, I don't care if you're on holidays or you got the measles or what's going on, you better be there at 11 o'clock on Fridays because that's the way you get the audience and the, and the community to show up. And mm -hmm. you have to trust the community. And it's built slowly, but when they show up, they, they show up for each other as much as for anything else. And it's very powerful. And, Maybe that's maybe we should start to kind of wrap up and sort of give our yeah. listeners a kind of a, a summary of, of of so maybe we can do that you and I together. So I guess one thing we're saying is commit, right? Mm -hmm. Commit, commit to the real time, authentic, genuine, regular opening up of sharing of information, and the operative word there is to to share it, right? To mm -hmm. uh, and I think the second thing we're saying is that. Uh, be consistent, you know, be, be consistent. It's, you're going to pivot, right? It's going to evolve, mm -hmm. be consistent. And, um, and I think uh, third is trust the community, engage, co-create with the community and, and use the, make it fun. Use the cur current tools and technology to really, whether not just the video, but polling or, you know, the chatting, the um, any number of things. And, is there anything you might add to that? Or? Yeah, I think for me too, I always believe in designing the experience as well. Yeah. So, you know, I know that you and I, we kind of like to go a little bit organic, um, but then, then there's a part of me too that I end up saying, okay, I need more structure. So I, tar I, I, I would sort of suggest that, you know, when you're designing your town halls, at first, maybe start to look at sort of, um, you know, sort of the experience. So what happens before that town hall? What's yeah, being yeah. asked? What's being gathered? How is it being promoted? What's happening during the uh, town hall? And then what happens after? So the conversation just doesn't have, doesn't have to end at that town hall. So what you're trying to do is continue the conversation. So I guess I would, I would design it from an experience standpoint. So the pre, the during, and the post. And uh, I, think, I think you'll see as a, as a leader or anybody who's organizing any kind of event for that matter, um, you'll see engagement just uh, increase tremendously. So yeah, those would be my-, my Yeah, leaders are, leaders are designers for sure. And Lynette, I think that is real wisdom, the idea of pre, during, and post design. I, as much as I like to wing things, um, I think your wisdom there is absolutely right. And, and uh, so maybe that's a good place to end. Yeah, and, that's good. Perfect. Yeah, thanks. Great kickoff and, uh, to, to the season, Lynette. And all of our listeners, thank you so much for co-creating with us. We really appreciate it. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks, Lauren. Bye. See you, Lynette. Bye.